It could be fun, but God doesn't like it. And God would not bless the person. So these are reasons why people gossip. And it's destructive. It would destroy the person's life. Uh, and there are other reasons, you know, uh, that people, they just, because people have negative thoughts about people. People despise people. They, when people see someone better than themselves, they will always say, well, he must have some hidden problem. They want to say things that cut them down. And then when they see someone lower than they, then they will say, this person is useless. They can never do anything good. So as you know, because of our feeling of inferiority, that very often pe people will feel inferior about themselves. And when they talk about the bad things of people, it makes some people feel better. They say that I'm better than that person because I have discovered something bad about him. So these are some reasons. And the uh, warning, reminder and warning that Jesus said, by your words, you'll be judged. That whether you are righteous or, or wicked, that if we always cut down people, we gossip about people, we hurt people in our words, then our whole life would be like full of garbage in the sight of God. And the most serious scenario, if the person doesn't repent of all, he can end up in hell. That's the worst scenario. Now, if not, if the person is saved, then he, you know, a lot of his good works will be canceled. For instance, if a person is serving God, but at the same time, he is gossiping about people and he is always talking down on people, hurting people with his words. Then what happens is, then like he helps people, but at the same time, he cut down people and hurt people. Then he will cancel out his good works. Then one day in front of God, God will say, well, you have tried to help people, but you, or your mouth is, also, is so uncontrollable. Your, your words have hurt so many people. And so what you have, you know, your sins will cancel all your good works. Then his good works will be in vain. So we tell people, this is warning. So this is the warning to tell people. But the main motivation is that God's put so much time in you. God has want to, wanted to bless you. God works in your life so much. And He has helped you so many times. He has done so many good things to you. So don't let, don't let you know, the desire to gossip destroy your life. So that's the positive motivation. God has put so much in you. He has worked in your life. He has given you spiritual gifts. He has worked in, in your life to give you opportunity to serve Him. He has rewarded you. Uh, he has given you what you need then we want to say, yes, I don't want to waste all the blessings of God. So this are the motivation from grace. Now grace is also what, what God has invested in our life, God, that God has put in so much love in our life, that God has put in so much effort. He has given us so much training and so many resources He has given us. So we want to say, yes, Lord, you have done so much to me. I want to thank you for everything you've done. Okay, and then how? How can we overcome gossip? Then we think about how some people have talked positively to us, how people have encouraged us, and it makes us grow, make us feel good when there are some people who, who say good things to us and they encourage us, and then we feel very happy. So we say, yes, I want to be like that too. I want to be encouraging other people too. And then uh, we examine ourselves. Why did I want to gossip? Why did I, why am I against a person? Why am I always looking for faults in a person? And I want to tell some other people. Now I know some people, they intentionally find faults with people that they don't like. They will listen to the words and see what they say wrong and they will notice their action, their relationship with people, and they want to find faults. And they also want to ask other people about their opinion on these people. For instance, sometimes people will attack the pastor by asking people, what do you think about the pastor? And then if the person says, you know, uh, I don't like his preaching, 
uh, I don't like something about him, then he would, they would, they would uh, magnify that, make it make bigger and, and tell other people and, and make people think the pastor is, is not good. But <clears throat> we might all have weaknesses. But we have some weakness doesn't mean the person is useless. And it also doesn't mean that we can gossip about the person. So sometimes we examine ourselves and say, do we have this desire to cut down on people, to, to despise people? Then we need to repent of our sins and ask God to forgive us so that we'll be talking positively about people. And then uh, we think back about how we have gossiped with some people. And some people are gossipers. And when we are with them, they always gossip. And then we don't know how to handle it. Then, then we need to sometimes do, let these people know, but not to, not to yell at them. But we say, let us pray for the person. Let us think about how to help the person. So turn something negative into something positive. So we can talk like that to people who gossip. And also, if the person continues to gossip, then we want to consider not to spend much time with the person. We want to help the person, but we don't want to spend more time with the person. We want to spend time with people who are constructive, who want to build up the kingdom of God, who wants to serve God, who wants to do things for God, and then we serve God together with them and, and communicate with them to build up each other instead of spending time with people who gossip. So we examine our lives. And then also every moment when we <clears throat> want to say something, we think about the impact on the person. Now this is very important. Um, as a pastor, I, very often I have to sometimes tell people what to do and also tell people not to do something. And I would think ahead of time. Sometimes I would talk with my wife, how can I say it in a way that I don't hurt this person? To make this person feel motivated. So how can I talk to this person to ask him to do something? We, I can first I can uh, encourage him by saying we have done something good and I appreciate you what you've done. God really likes. And then we have a project here. Do you want to do it? And it will help other people. So we can uh, when we ask someone to do something, we want to encourage them. Okay, how about? If we have to talk to some people about their problem, how can we talk to that person? Then we want to watch our tongues and think ahead of time. And we want to think about the good things of the person first and tell them about, about the good things they've done. And then we can ask them about an incident. I heard something about that incident. Uh, can you tell me what happened? So ask him what happened instead of saying, you told lies there. You, you did something bad there. We, we don't want to accuse the person. We want to find out from the person what the person says. And if what the person says doesn't agree with what other people says, then we'll ask them, okay, I heard another story. What do you think that happened? Uh, what really happened at that time? So we can confront him in a, in a gentle way and ask uh, what happened there? Can you tell me what happened there? And then we'll talk gently with the person and ask him, okay, uh, so something happened and, uh, you know, maybe you hurt someone. So uh, what do you think that would affect the person? How it would affect the person? And what can you do to correct the situation and build up the relationship again? So instead of accusing the person, we ask them how to correct the situation and ask them. Now as a Christian, if he doesn't respond to that, then there is something wrong with his faith. And then we can tell him, you know, when you've done something wrong, you need to repent. And um, so, uh, so that's the last resort that we use a heavier approach. But even a heavier approach, we want to not we don't want to make the people feel very bad. We just say, you know, it's something we have to face. Uh, if we offended someone, so how can we correct it? And if we continue to offend people, then God doesn't like what we do and that God doesn't like our life. So can we repent of that? So 
So that's how we can talk to people to confront people instead of talking to some other people about their problem. Okay, now we go to the fourth one, steal, not to steal. Okay, and uh, so the negative and positive example is, you know, everyone in the life have stolen something at least once or more that, you know, even rich people steal. And even Christians steal. Sometimes Christians are put into temptation when they count the offering or when they buy something for the church and then they keep some of the money or they buy something for the household and then they keep some of the money for themselves. That is not legitimate. That is stealing. Even in our work that we're supposed to have, like for instance, a 15 minutes break time, but some people just take one hour break time. That is stealing from the boss. And, or working lazily. That's stealing from the boss. Okay, and so positive example that there are people, not only don't, they don't steal, but they want to give. They want to give to people, to help people, to bless people, to do more than necessary. Okay, now God's nature. God's nature, He never steals. He gives to people. Everyone owes him a lot. Everyone receives blessings from God all the time. God is a giver. God never steals. And God doesn't like stealing. God doesn't like people who steal. And God will face the person, you know, in judgment's time. Now, that is the law. Now, God's nature includes both his, his, uh, his nature to bless people uh, and then the nature to... Uh, confront people and punish people. So God is a holy God. He cannot stand stealing. And then negative and positive examples of people are there are people who, oh I just talked about them, sorry, to so the nature of God and then God's grace. God's grace is when the Holy Spirit comes in our life, He would tell us not to steal anymore. There are people, you know, I've known a person who is who was a gang leader and he has done all kinds he had committed all kinds of crimes he earned a lot of money from these crimes and then God converted him powerfully by many miracles and then he finally turned to God and then he did not he did not do this you know this gambling or this uh, an illegal things anymore. Not only that, he started a business to help people, to find jobs, to help ex, ex convicts, people who were uh, offenders of the law, to help them to find a job. So instead of stealing, he started to help people who have stolen, to build up their life again. And then uh, God will continue to work in our life. And then if a person is always blessing people, God is very happy with that person, God will bless the person. Okay, so God moves in our heart so that we won't steal, so that we, won't, we will have a heart to give to people and we won't think that is losing, that we're not losing something when we are blessing people. And then why do Christians still steal? You know, I'm very sad. I have, you know, there are pastors who have stolen from our mission money. That I, when I discover that some pastors have taken our money for some other purpose, I was very sad. I was not angry. I was not angry because it's their loss. It's not my loss. It's, it's their loss when they steal from God's money. It's their loss. And I'm sad for them because they will lose the favor of God. And God doesn't like them. And they will lose more and more. So I'm sad for them. And, and, I, and I want to protect God's money. I want to be a good steward. And that's why in this program of helping some pastors to buy equipment, I want accountability. I want the people to do the assignments. I want people to report their presence and do the assignments. And then that way I am keeping accountability of the money so that the money is used correctly. And I want all the receipts and all the 
photos of the transaction, everything, uh, all the, the receipts they have from the, from, the, uh, from the shop and everything. I want, I want, to, um, I want to see all these receipts so that uh, I'm accountable, the people are accountable. So uh, this is what happened, you know, that people were still steal. They were steal from, from God's money. Okay, and then um, warning. When people steal from God, what happened is they will lose more. They will lose more. They can lose their eternal life. They can lose everything they have. When God doesn't like the person, God doesn't bless the person, the person can be in trouble. Now, there are people who sin against God, and then they, they face very serious consequences. You might have heard about Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee was, you know, he was a um, kung fu man in Hong Kong, and he, you know, he earned a lot of money. But in his last movie, the mo name of the movie is uh, The Game of Death. That he pretended to be dead in a game, in, a, in a, 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 handling some problem. He pretended to be dead. But the fact is, he himself died in the middle of the making of this movie. So he could not finish this movie. And the movie was finished by some other people. So he you know he pretend that he can uh, have victory over death and he can you know he can um, uh, have the name of the movie called the game of death that death is like a game and then finally he loses his life and I happen to know somebody who knows him personally at one time I met a person who who was a friend of Bruce Lee and he said Bruce Lee, you know, they, they do Kung Fu in a, when they were young. And then uh, many years later, they met again. And this man said to him, um, they, you know, actually they, they test each other on a Kung Fu. And then when Bruce Lee kicked him, he flew away over 10 feet away. And then this man is a Christian. He said to Bruce Lee, you know, Jesus loves you. And Jesus wants to give you eternal life. And Bruce Lee said, I don't need that. You look at my life. I don't need that. He thinks that I, he doesn't need that, but he died very young. So this is something that, that warns us. When we steal from God, God doesn't like that. It's very, very serious. Okay, and then how? So we see that everything comes from God. We don't have to use illegal way to get money. We don't have to tell lies to get money. We don't have to cheat to get money. And then if we get money illegally, what happens is we lose more. So I'm telling the pastors, for those pastors who get the equipment and not to learn, not to use it for learning and not to do the assignments, then you are wasting God's money and you are stealing from God also. So we want to repent and we don't want to lose more. So we want to say, yes, Lord, you have given me so much. I want to thank you. I want to respond to you. I don't want to sin. I don't want uh, the blessings to be taken from me. And then I want to do good things to people. When you want to bless people and do good things to people, you receive more blessings. You receive more good things. Okay? So I've demonstrated with these four themes here how to have different themes and each section of the message will always link to the theme. We always link to the theme that you don't stray away from the theme. You always follow the theme. Okay.